Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the top eight from the Milwaukee Regionals, which took place this weekend yesterday when I'm filming this. The top eight is currently out. It was out yesterday. We don't have all the deck lists, as you can see. Only some of them actually have the lists. And some of them are stuff we've seen plenty of times, but I will go through it. We'll talk a little bit about how the tournament went. I did miss some of the final matches, but I did see some, uh, some strange things along the way, like Flying Pikachu versus... Mill tank and stuff like that some very strange games so we're going to get into that we're going to talk about some of these decks and see how the meta game has shifted in astral radiance so we'll start with eighth place probably a good place to start which was riley, riley hulbert um they were playing palkia in teleon so there's a few different versions of palkia this seems to be the most popular so we'll take a look at the list itself so running four palkia v three which is fairly safe. The turbo list just runs a 2-2 two -two or 3-3, three -three, which can be a little tricky. You can have quite a few of these prized, so this is a little safer. It's then got the Inteleon engine to make it a little more consistent. Um, not quite as quick. doesn't set up as fast or attack as quickly and stuff like that, but once it does set up, it's a lot better. And obviously in this tournament, it's proven its worth. Obviously, Inteleon, well, I say obviously, we haven't had confirmation, but... Should rotation go as planned, this will all be going like, like a, in a month. So I'll be interested to see what happens to the deck after that. Will it be as good? Obviously, there's no turbo Palkia in the top eight that I saw anyway. We will double check that, but I don't, th we haven't got a list on some of them. So I don't think there is any. That's an expensive deck as well. I kind of like that we get that here. Um, the Blissey deck, I think. It's pretty much a budget deck. I think it was around $20 or something like that. It's unbelievable. But we'll get into that shortly. Um, other than Inteleon, it's obviously got Radiant Greninja, which can discard energy to draw cards. It can also Moonlight Shuriken. So discard two and do 90 to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That can snipe out stuff like Drizzile. It can snipe out Sobbles. All of that stuff they've got on the bench. It can also help deal with Mill Tanks. It's not the perfect answer to it, but... You need something in this deck which can deal with it. You've obviously got the Inteleons and the Quick Shoot and another good stuff. So it's fairly safe into Blissey, into Mill Tank, stuff like that. So yeah, it's quite a good quite a good deck to play against most decks. So I think that's why it's done so well. Then obviously Manaphy and Crobat, fairly standard. Only seven water energies. Um obviously it does run some Melanie, so it can recycle them. You can use the V Star ability. So there are ways to get it back. I, there's ordinary rods yeah there's i don't think you need more there might be the odd turn where you whiff energy maybe but obviously not if they've all made well quite a few of them have made top eight not as many as we saw in one of the previous tournaments but as this is the first official one the first regionals that it's legal to play astral radiance yeah it's quite interesting to see how this has worked we do see a roxanne in the list we do see one marnie so slightly i wasn't sure if roxanne was going to make a big impact just because of how useful it is or useless it is half of the game or less. So in this, they're going to need to take two V-Star knockouts before they can even use this, which isn't great. Obviously, once you've lost two V-Stars, you're probably in trouble anyway. Um, I don't think they're going to go for an Inteleon just because of stuff like Roxanne and just because there's no point really. So yeah, I don't know how useful it was in this matchup, honestly. But it's nice to see other trainers being used, other supporters. So yeah, I quite like Roxanne. It's just, it's a tricky one. Uh, and then Leon, nothing really out of the ordinary. I, I would say this is a fairly standard list. I think the tool jammer is really interesting. I guess it turns off stuff like the uh, giant charm, big charm, um, which makes sense. Easier to take knockouts on stuff. It also turns off stuff like air balloons to trap stuff in the active. There's a few uses I can see for that, which is, Quite cool. Um, and then Temple of Sinnoh. Really like this stadium. Obviously, it absolutely destroys Reggie's. It hurts stuff like Arceus. There's a ton of different things that it does well against. The one path as well. I think this is the perfect divide of stadiums. This is what I run in uh, my Darkrai deck. Massive fan of Darkrai. So I might, I might go on about that a little bit. It'll be nice to see outside of the top eight because I am very curious where stuff like Darkrai came. I know somebody was playing it day one who I was following. But I 
don't think they made day two, so I didn't really see much of it, but they had a pretty cool list. They ran it with Galarian Weezin. Um, but that's number eight. So as you can see, there are a few of these. We'll just quickly take a look at position six to see if it's much different. So they do run the Star V and the Luminion, which I like. Honestly, Aqua Return is not even that terrible of an attack. I have seen that used to some cool effect. Uh, Star V, obviously, for the energy, energy Spiral, which is super good. Same amount of energy, same amount of item, uh, same amount, similar items. Uh, they do run less stadiums. Don't know if that played into it. They do run a lot of Irida. And they do also run the Roxanne and a Nessa. So yeah, a few little techs here that maybe made it a little more useful, obviously with Inteleon and Drizzles and all of that stuff. You can search these out really easy. So you can keep using them with Palpad as well. So yeah, I do like that. I do think if you're going to run Inteleon, you might as well take advantage and run these one-offs, which are useful in a lot of turns and matchups. The one-off battle VIP pass is uh, interesting. I guess if they get Irida, they can get it out. Uh, you can't evolve first turn, so yeah, they're just relying on Irida there. Although you can Luminion for it, so that's five ways to get it, six. So there are a few ways to get that out, so this is what I mean. You can run these one-offs in stuff like Inteleon, and it makes it so easy to get them out. Unfortunately, seventh place was Frank Mintmeyer, and we don't have his deck list. Let me take a quick look on Twitter, see if I can find anything. Yeah, I can't find anything on that yet, unfortunately. Uh, it is Duraludon, so obviously special energy doesn't work against it. Stuff like Reggie's have no chance. Stuff like Blissey's have no chance. <laughs> There's a few things in the current game that he just beats. I think this... I think Duraludon was a really risky but intelligent play. It's really ballsy, honestly, because... With stuff like Palkia, maybe Dark could have had some presence with Darkrai or Samurott. He's really had to predict what he thinks is going to be in the game, and he's predicted it perfectly here. Obviously, Braden Alpha as well, Elfert, uh, came first with it. So both these guys, huge cojones to play it. Respect to both of you, honestly. I think that was a really impressive call. Obviously, there's special energy decks but uh it didn't really see like it was going to be a big deal in astral radiance obviously with Palk palkia being so prevalent and it only using water most people have tried to counter that but these guys have really gone they've really five-headed this one they've gone above and beyond and yeah they've picked the perfect deck and it shows they've done amazing here obviously it's just a it's linear in what it does it only does one thing but that thing, it does really well. It protects itself and it can just smash you for big numbers. It's very, very straightforward, but it, in a new meta game, that's maybe all you need. I think, yeah, oh yeah, massive props to these guys. I think that was a huge call and one that's obviously paid off. And then, like I say, we've got a few more. We've got a Palkia Inteleon, then we've got the Arceus Inteleon. Again, a deck we've seen plenty of times before. Nothing really new here. Uh, I'll just take a quick look through in case I've missed anything. Yeah, it looks fairly fairly standard. Again, the one Roxanne Splash in Drizzle works perfectly. In most decks, I think it's okay as well, to be honest. I have started running it in mine. So yeah, I just think it's a good card all round. And then getting to the top four, we've got no deck list here, unfortunately. Um, we have got one for Chris. Uh, it's Mew Genesec, so again... I don't think there's going to be anything new or different here. He does run three trekking shoes, which, yeah, that makes sense. Fits perfectly into Mew. Um, three rows tower. Maybe slightly change their stadium count around. But they don't run any regular psychic energy, so that makes sense. Fairly standard Mew deck. I don't think there's much to go over on that one. Mew does what it does and has been doing for a long time now. <laughs> And it's super consistent. So again, I think that's a great call for the current meta game. If you don't know what's coming, if you don't know what's going to happen, choose consistency. Choose the decks you're comfortable with. Choose the ones that have been proving themselves in the old meta game. And then see what happens. I, I don't doubt these guys are going to change their decks maybe in different tournaments. But right now, not knowing what the meta game is going to be, is, it's the best call, honestly. Um, we do see Miltank make an immediate impact with Connor. Second place. again. Amazing deck, well done. Um, 
30 okay so i was slightly off but 32 dollars for a second place regional deck is it's amazing i love when people take decks like this and do big things and connor's definitely done that here so i know there was a big thing this is who i watched against azul um where they were just drawing and passing it was one of the strangest games i've ever seen it was slight it was very interesting in some of the because they definitely had cards they were digging for it wasn't just they were trying to although i think they i think either would have been happy just running out um but yeah they were obviously digging for cards to hit combos this tornadus was what made the difference um such a strange tech but obviously he's thought about these specific situations and yeah it's just paid off perfectly um it, yeah he's done really well with that it's one of those cards which has an insane ability like really powerful very powerful i don't know why we don't see more of it honestly and i think in a deck like this where there's a few tricky there's a lot of other decks out there which can be quite tricky for it so i can see why this would be used it was just an absolutely it's so, only one mill tank is that right okay so i guess the main strategy in this one is blissey v I do find that kind of shocking. I thought there was more mill tank. I'm sure I saw mill tank in the active every game. They may be quite lucky to have that. Um, yeah, fairly standard in what it does. Obviously, it can wall against Vs. It's got Blissey V to attach special energy and just pile up damage. This is great against stuff like uh, Duralla down as well because it can just switch in an Arceus from the bench. So yeah, really good deck. This obviously hurts a lot of stuff with Cryo Destruction. Absolutely devastating card, honestly. I'm running stuff that are going to be attached to uh, Blissey V. Obviously, you can get that off quite easily. Really interesting deck. I am glad stuff like this is in the format. I know that sounds silly because there is games where this weird pass, draw, pass, draw happens. And it's because of this, honestly. Um, but saying that, Azul's deck with a Pikachu did similar. So I just think people... Well, I say people, me included. My Dark Ride deck doesn't have an answer to Mill Tank, so I just try and run the Dark Rise and other V attackers. I have to change up my thoughts now. I have to change up my deck, and I love when they introduce cards that make you do that. I do think it's good for the game. It's a very powerful ability, but there are ways around it. There's canceling clone. There's having non V attackers. It's so strange that that's such a foreign concept for Pokemon players. And I think Mill Tank's a good way to remind people that are of a Pokemon. It's just always good. I think it's always good for the game, and I'm never, never gonna have a complaint about something like this. I do quite like Mill Tank the Pokemon as well, so it's cool to see it in a second place placing for a regional. Other than that, fairly Sanders stuff. There's a lot of healing, obviously, for Blissey V. Again, Hyper Potions are gonna rotate. A lot of other stuff is gonna rotate, so I'm very excited to see what happens to the meta game. Once rotation takes place, if it does take place, we still have no formal warning or anything of it coming up, which we normally would have. So I'm a little, I'm a little unsure on how that's going to work, but I'm very interested to see when it does. Let me know any decks in this you thought were interesting or didn't expect, or cards you didn't expect, like Tornadus or I feel like Evetel maybe you probably did. But yeah, there's a few in there that you probably didn't expect to top eight, honestly. Duraludon, I thought, was washed. I had, thought it had no chance. These people have proved me wrong, and that's why they're in top place, and I'm sat here recording a video on it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Take a look at the channel for some unboxings, for some deck profiles and gameplay. Let me know of any other videos or decks you want to see profiled on the channel. That's all I've got for this episode, so I will catch you in the next one.